According to the Hadith 3229 of Sunan and Nisa, he should not marry her. Sunan and Nisa'i. The name is Sunan, Nisa'i. Sunan and Nisa'i. Yes. What shall a man do if the character of his wife is not good? According to Hadith 3231 of Sunan Nisa'i, he should divorce her. There are three ladies. First one is beautiful, second one is rich, third one is religious. Which of these three shall a man send marriage proposal? According to Hadith 3232, he should choose religious lady. How can you become the best wife? According to Hadith 3233, making him happy by looking good in front of him and obeying. And there was one more point. Make him feel that everything you own, like wealth or in bank balance, is his also. Yeah, and do not go against his wishes. Yes. Today we will study from the book Sayy Al Bukhari, Hadith number twenty six seventy five. Next student, Wasim. Muhammad. Narrated Abdullah, Abdullah bin Abu Awfa, radiallahu anhuma, a man displayed some goods in the market and took a false oath that he had been offered so much for them, though he was not offered that amount. Then, he, then the following divine verse was revealed. Verily, those who purchase a small gain at the cost of Allah's covenant and their oath Ibn Abu Awfa added, such person as described above is a, treach is a treacherous river eater. We have seen this thing sometime. For example, I am selling something. Let me remove the old things. For example, I am selling something and I am demanding sale price of maybe 150 pounds. You come to me and you say, no, sell it to me for 120 pounds. And here, people often tell a lie. They say, no, we have already been offered for 140 pounds. And this is a lie. Nobody has given them this offer. Then you believe me and do you buy it for 150 pound. According to this hadith, if I do this, then the basically I am a Rebuyer, or I am this ayah is for such person who tells a lie to sold his things at a higher price. This ayah is for such people. Basically, we should not say any lie, we should not tell a lie while doing so. What about if I sell something? When I bought it for 150, then I sell it for 160 for like a profit. Nothing wrong in it. Is it considered okay? 
so in this situation for example here i have told a lie so this lie is not allowed i have another option here for example if you come to me and you ask me to sell this thing to you for 120 i can just say no i will not sell it for 120 if you want to buy buy it for 150 pound otherwise i will not sell it to you i can do this thing similarly you can also buy it for 150 then sell it to someone else for 160 pound nothing wrong in it but we should not tell a lie to anyone while doing trade for example if you ask me for how much you bought it then i will tell i must tell you the truth that i bought it for 100 pounds I cannot lie by saying that I bought it for 140 pounds. I cannot lie like this. This lie is not allowed. And if I lie like this, then this chronic ayah is for me. This chronic ayah. Mr. Vaseem, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear very clearly. Okay, read this and this. Uh, the narrator Abu Wail from Abdullah said, Whoever takes a false oath in order to grab another man's or brother's property, then Allah will be angry with him when he will meet him. Then Allah will. Then Allah confirmed this by revealing the divine verse. Verily, those who purchase a small gain at the cost of Allah's covenant and their oath up to a payment, uh, up to a painful torment. Uh, Al Aish uh, met me and asked, What did Abdullah tell you today? I said, Such and such. He said, The verse was revealed regarding my case. So this can happen in many situations. For example, in the court, if I take a false oath and other person does not have any proof, the court will definitely give me the property or maybe some wealth. But in Islamic law, that thing does not belong to me. So in that case, Allah will be angry with me when Allah will meet me. Similarly, if I am selling something and I just tell a lie, to store it at higher price, then same I is still valid for me. So basically, we should never take a false oath. Never in the court or never in the markets while doing trade. Next student, Najma Gul. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Read this. Allah said they, they swear by Allah. And Allah said they come, they come to you swearing by Allah. We, mean, we meant no more than goodwill and conciliation. The expression used in Arabic for by Allah are Billahi. The Prophet Wallahi. Wallahi. The Prophet said, and a man who, ta who takes a false oath in the name of Allah after the Asr prayer. The Prophet said, one should not swear except by Allah. Next student, Um Muhammad. Narrated Talha bin Abu Baydullah, <clears throat> radiallahu anhu, a man came to Allah's messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, asking him about Islam. Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you have to offer five compulsory congregational salah. 
in a day and a night, 24 hours. The man asked, are there any more compulsory salat prayers for me? Allah Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, no, unless you like to offer nawafil, optional salah. Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then added, you have to observe fast. During the month of Ramadan, the man said, I am to fast any other days. Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, no, unless you wish to observe the optional fast voluntary. Then Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him about the compulsory zakat. The man asked, do I have to give anything besides? Allah Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, no, unless you wish to give in charity voluntarily. So the man departed saying, by Allah, I will never do more nor less than that. Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if he has said the truth, he will be successful. So first we have different Quranic ayahs and hadiths regarding taking oath or swearing. We'll study them in detail in the chapter of swearing, inshallah. <clears throat> then we have this and this, that what if a person do only for eyes? Eyes are basically tohid, salah, saum, zakah. These are the flies. So if anyone just do these things, still he will go to paradise. He will be successful, inshallah. Provided that he does not commit any major sins. Name of book is Sahih al-Bukhari. Sahih al-Bukhari. Mr. Wasim. Yeah. <coughs> Narrated Abdullah radiallahu anhu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, "Whoever has to take an oath should swear by Allah, or <clears throat> keep quiet. He should not swear by any other than Allah." So sometimes we have to take swear, or sometimes we have to take an oath. So we cannot use the name of any person in that oath. That by my children, by my parents, we can always swear by the name of Allah. Can you take the question that you need to write here is can you take oath or can you swear by anyone name like by saying by my parents, by my son, by my, my daughter, no. In the answer you will write. According to Hadith 26, 79 of Sayyid al-Bukhari. <clears throat> no. We can only swear by Allah. No, we can only swear by Allah. So in Allah, you can use these words which are written here. <clears throat> Billahi is the first word. Salahi, second word. Wallahi. You can use these three words. Basically, you are making a witness. Allah. You are making Allah as a witness. The Next student. Should I continue? Yes. Uh, now we need to repeat this question. So, the next student is... Najma. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Repeat the question, the answer. Can you take oath or swear by anyone's name? The answer 2679 Hadith Sahih al Bukhari. No, we cannot. We can only swear by Allah. Now read this one. The Prophet said, perhaps. Some of you are more eloquent and 
per persuasive in presenting their arguments than their opponents. Tawas, Tawas, Ibrahim, and Shori. Shori said. So Rai said a clear just evidence produces by the plain plaintiff uh, is more valid than a false oath taken by the defendant. Read the next one. Narrative. Um, Salma, Taranha, once Allah's Messenger وسلم, said, You people present your cases to me, and some of you may be more eloquent and persuasive in presenting their agreements. So, if I give someone's right to another wrongly because of the letters tricky presentation of the case i am really giving him a piece of fire so he should not take it and this uh, is is especially for the lawyers so sometimes as we see in our judicial system around the globe everyone tries his best to hire the best lawyer so best a good lawyer can even win the case for things which don't belong to us. For example, we have a property dispute. We have some financial dispute. The person who hires the best lawyer usually won the case in the courts. So this is a these for is such people that we can also say sometimes a lawyer is more eloquent and persuasive in presenting his argument. So basically, if that lawyer wins the case, he is actually winning a piece of fire for himself and his, and what we say, Mokil ki English kya hoti hai? Kis ki? Mokil ki. Mokil ki. So basically, the lawyer is earning a piece of fire for himself and his client his client so jo wakalat karta hai yes so here we will write the question what if a person or a lawyer <clears throat> won the case or take someone rightful take someone rightful thing by presenting his case more eloquently and persuasively in the court so we need to write this question but if a person or a lawyer. What if a lawyer won or win the court case what if a lawyer win the court case about the things which are not rightful to his client by giving his arguments more eloquently and 
pursue a sibling. The situation is this that a lawyer in the court case about the thing which may be a property, which may be some money, which may be some land, which is not rightful to his client. According to Islamic law, it does not belong to his client. But the lawyer present his case, present his arguments very eloquently and persuasively that the he won the case and they get that piece of land or maybe that property or maybe that money. In the answer you write according to Hadith 2680 the lawyer is actually winning. Lawyer is actually winning a piece of fire for himself and his client. In the answer, you write according to the Hadith 2680. The lawyer is actually winning a piece of fire for himself and his client. Ms. Ahmed, read the question and the answer. What if a lawyer win the court case about the things which are not rightful to his client by giving his arguments more eloquently and persuasively? According to Hadith 2680, the lawyer is actually winning a piece of fire for himself and his client. Ms. Umay Ahmed, one question for you. You are living in UK. So in UK, a Muslim woman can easily take the right of his brother. For example, let's suppose a man died whose inheritance is maybe two ratio one. Yes. You can say 3,000. 3,000 pounds. According to Islamic law, the son will get 2,000 pounds and the daughter will get 1,000 pounds. But in UK, the daughter can easily go to the court and increase this to 1500 pound have you ever seen this thing among the muslims in uk that they take the matter to the court in order to take things which doesn't belong to them i'm not sure i don't know really but mm. i think they do because, because yeah, one they have people I... right mm. one thing i know that if a muslim lady takes the matter in the court, she can easily get uh, equal property as his brother. Yeah, by the law, they here, they take equal. There is no, like, in Islam, mm. if it's a boy, they take half of it, and, you know, but for them, it's, like, equal. If it's 10,000, the daughter gets 5,000, and the son gets 5,000. So, basically, they are also getting a piece of fire for themselves. Even if the local law allows them, still they cannot take this thing. Mr. Wasim, read the next one. Okay. Um, Allah Hassan supported this judgment. Allah says, and mentioned in the book, the Quran, Ismail alayhi salam, verily he was true to what he promised. Ibn al-Ashwa judged that promises should be fulfilled and he mentioned that Samura ab uh, adopted the same opinion. Narrated al-Miswar bin Bakarama uh, radiyallahu anha I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying 
about one of his sons in law he promised to me and fulfilled his promise promise uh, narrated abu uh, abdullah al bukhari i saw ishaq bin ibrahim depending on ibn al shwa ashwas uh, narration in giving verdicts so basically here we will study the hadith about promises so they are quoting different things from different chronic ayah and hadith then we will have a hadith here yes so inshallah we'll continue this hadith next time inshallah if anybody has any question they can ask me sure. uh, sheikh had a question uh, which is with regards to taking allah's name uh, like wallahi and so on so because i've been in gulf for some time and the arabs have this habit of saying wallahi and it's just a habit it is not to it's not a uh, a lie and it's not a oath but they are used to saying wallahi i thought i would come over there wallahi i'll meet you at 3 o'clock uh, but then uh, it's neither a promise or neither uh, it's a part of their language so is that okay or is it uh, not okay to uh, take a last name unintentionally so basically in you know, one example for example wallahi I wanted to come, but I could not come. So basically, they are making Allah as a witness that whatever they are saying is true. So mm -hmm. nothing wrong in it, but we better not make it a habit. As far as my knowledge, when we make it habit, often we will tell lies by making Allah a witness, which will definitely not work for us. So we need to avoid making it a habit. We should use this these phrases only when it is very when we don't have any other option. So exactly. try to avoid saying these words wallahi, billahi, ta'alahi. Only use them when it is when you don't have any other option. When the situation is serious. For normal occasion, avoid using these things. Just normally say, I wanted to come, but I could not come. I wanted to reach there on time, but I could not reach there. Simple phrases without taking any oath. Anybody else? See you all next time, inshallah. Wassalamu. Inshallah, just. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah.